from this video we will begin the black box techniques and the first technique that we have is equivalence partitioning what is equivalence partitioning equivalence partitioning depends on that we divide our system into partitions each partition of them is expected to behave in the same way okay so if we say that we will treat all undergraduates or all university students in the same way so we can consider them as one partition and all graduates or all people who are working in the field are considered as another partition okay to perform equivalence partitioning we need to get one test case from each partition so let's take an example here this example says an employee's bonus needs to be calculated we want to calculate the bonus of the employee it cannot become negative this bonus cannot become negative but it can be calculated to zero it can be zero the bonus is based on the duration of the employment it depends on how much time you worked for the company an employee can be employed for less than or equal to two years so the first condition is that you worked with us less than two years the second condition is more than two years but less than five years the third condition five years to ten years and the last condition longer than ten years so we have four conditions or four partitions here the first zero to two years the second two to five years the third five to ten years the fourth longer than ten years depending on this period of employment an employee will get either no bonus or a bonus of 10% or 25% or 35% so if you work from 0 to 2 years you will not get any bonus 2 to 5 years you will get 10% 5 to 10 years you will get 25 more than 10 years you will get 35% the question is how many equivalence partitions are needed to test the calculation of the bonus how many partitions are here how many different outputs do we have like we said we have four partitions one from zero to two the second from two to five the third from five to ten the fourth is more than ten so we have four partitions and if we want to design test cases for this question we will say for example the first test case is one who worked for one year okay the second a person who worked for four years the third is a person who worked for seven years and the fourth is a person who worked for 13 years any number more than 10 years this means that we covered all the partitions let's look at another example and here i will need my sticky notes with me okay so i will write down some numbers here we have a system that is designed to calculate the tax to be paid okay how much tax will you pay an employee has 4000 pounds of salary tax free so if your salary is between zero pounds and four thousand pounds you will not pay any taxes this is one partition why because any number in this partition will give me the same result which is zero tax okay the next one thousand and five hundred is taxed at ten percent the meaning of this is that beginning from four thousand and one which means more than four thousand and four 1500 so we will add 1500 on 4000 which means 5500 so if your salary is between 4001 to 5500 you will pay 10 percent taxes okay this is the second partition the third partition he says the next 28000 is taxed at 22 percent so the same if your salary is more than 5500 if we add on this number 28000 okay which is 33500 any salary in this range will have 22 percent of taxes okay and then he says any further amount is taxed at 40 percent which means 33501 until infinity okay any salary more than this number will have 40 percent taxes the question is which of these groups of numbers would fall into the same equivalence class he wants you to choose the answer that all the numbers in it will give me the same output okay all the numbers in it have the same equivalence class so let's look at the first answer 4800 is in the second partition 
14,000 is in the third partition, which is a wrong answer. We want three numbers which are in the same partition. The second choice, 5,200, which is in the second partition, 5,500, which is in the second partition, 28,000, which is in the third partition. So this also is a wrong answer. 28,001, which is in the third partition, 32,000 in the third partition 2, and 35,000 in the fourth partition, in partition number 4, which is a wrong answer. So let's look at the last answer. 5,800, this is in the third partition. 28,000, this is also in the third partition. And 32,000, also in the third partition. So this is the correct answer, okay? These three numbers all are in the same partition, which is partition number three. The next question says, a programmer validates a numeric field as follows. So there is a programmer and he needs to check a number in his programming. Values less than 10 are rejected, okay? This is the first partition. Any number less than 10 is rejected. The second partition is values between 10 and 21 are accepted. So from 10 to 21, all these are in the same partition which are accepted. Values greater than or equal to 22 are rejected. So greater than or equal 22 are accepted. So these are our three partitions. The first is less than 10. The second is from 10 to 21. The third is more than or equal to 22. Which of the following input values cover all of the equivalence partitions? We need input values that cover all the equivalence partitions. So we need one value from each partition. So let's look at the first choice, 10, 11, 12. 10 is in the second partition. 11 is in partition number two also. And 12 is also in partition number two. So this is wrong. We want one answer from each partition. We don't want all the answers from one partition. The second choice, three in the first partition, 20 in the second partition, and 21 in the second partition. We didn't cover partition number three. Choice number C, three in the first partition, 10 in the second partition, 22 in the third partition. So C covers all the partitions correctly. Okay, three, 10, and 22 cover all the partitions. But let's also look at the last choice, 10, 21, 22. 10 is in the partition number two, 21 is in partition number two, 22 is in partition number three. So partition number one is not covered. So the correct answer is C. The last question here, which is not a problem, okay, says which of the following statements are true for the equivalence partitioning test technique? Okay, so from your understanding about equivalence partitions, which of these statements is correct? And there are two correct statements. The first, that equivalence partitioning divides possible inputs into classes that have the same behavior. This is correct, okay? We divide our system into classes. Each class, all its inputs have the same behavior. So this one is correct. B, it uses both valid and invalid partitions, which is a correct answer. Like this example, which we solved now, we tested the valid partition, which is the accepted one, and we tested the invalid partitions, which are the rejected ones. So B also is true. It uses both valid and invalid partitions. C, it makes use only of valid partitions. This is wrong, okay? If he didn't tell you to use only the valid partitions, you will use the valid and invalid partition. D, it must include at least two values from every equivalence partition. This is wrong, okay? It includes one value from each partition, like we solved in all the examples. E, it can only be used for testing equivalence partitions inputs from a graphical user interface. This is wrong, okay? We said it can be used for anything that can be divided into partitions, okay? Even for times, even for coding, for anything. So the correct answers are A and B, which are equivalence partitioning, divides possible inputs into classes that have the same behavior, and it uses both valid and invalid partitions.